Hello and welcome to the Inquisitive Crafter. I'm Katrina Stewart from Crafty Jacks and today we're talking about sheep breeds. So one of the things that I love about being a spinner is that I can explore different breeds of sheep that aren't available in yarn form for knitting. And what I thought I would do is start a series of talking about different sheep breeds, their properties, what I love about them, and what it's like to spin them, and hopefully inspire you to try some new breeds. So today I'm going to start with Shropshire. And I have a little bit of trouble saying that name, so please forgive me if I'm mispronouncing it. Shropshire is a breed that was developed in the early 1800s by crossing pulled or horned sheep with Cotswold, Leicester, and Southdown breeds. And so it's created a down sheep that is quite hardy. It is great for grazing in between trees. It doesn't damage the trees. And it's a dual purpose sheep in that it is bred for both meat and fleece. These sheep were imported into Canada in 1860s and it was a really popular breed for a very long time because they are so hardy and able to withstand a lot. And then they started to drastically decline in the 1950s and they are now listed as a rare breed. They are actually a really lovely sheep to spin. So I spun a tiny little sample and what I found is that the fiber is very uh, fine. It is very much a down breed in that it's, it's very sort of crimpy and has a lovely bounce to it. Um, it has kept its definition in the spinning, which sometimes down breeds sort of puff out so much that you don't see the definition in it. This one has kept its definition, which is really quite lovely. Um, for me, I'm quite sensitive to wools and I could actually wear this next to my skin, but I can see these being really, really cozy mittens or um, outerwear accessories that you want to keep you nice and warm and, and have it be that sort of fuzzy, squishy sort of type of yarn. And you can see just by comparing a braid that has been dyed versus a braid that has been undyed, you can see how much the fiber sort of bounces back and, and regains that crimp in it um, in the dyeing process. And, and that's just from being immersed in, in hot water and that re reactivates the crimp. I found that it really does take the dye beautifully. Um, as with most down breeds, it has sort of a little bit of a halo to it and there's a little bit more um, of a softer effect to the final dye product um, just because it doesn't have a lot of luster in it. When I researched it online, it says that it's got a staple length of 10 to 15 centimeters, so that's about five to seven inches, and a micron count of between 26 and 28. So when you think about micron counts, the smaller the number, the finer it is. Uh, merino sort of falls in around the 19 to 24 mark, and so you can see that it's really quite a soft, fine fleece. Uh, it doesn't have a lot of kemp, which is the guard hairs, and it doesn't have a lot of like, sometimes with different breeds, you'll get a lot of black hairs or brown hairs, and this doesn't have that either. Um, this is a breed that we have brought in specifically for spinners to try. And so I have a limited quantity in our shop right now. So if you wanna give it a try and see what you think of it, I would love to hear your feedback on it. And so that's a little bit about Shropshire sheep, where they came from and where they started, and I hope it inspires you to give them a try. Thanks so much for joining me today. If you have a question you would like us to answer in a future video, please send your questions to ask at craftyjacks.ca, and I will do my best to do that for you. Have a wonderful day, and we'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.